Hi, this is Leland Snyder for Frack Times. So if you listen to Dr. Shaw's testimony, you'll learn that he was given very specific instructions. He was only to provide mitigation and surveillance recommendations, not to decide if fracking was safe for New York. It's implied that the DEC has already decided that and it is, while the DEC might have implied that this is a study, Dr. Shaw says very specifically that this is only a review. So, the outside experts were only provided 24 hours of contracted payment for their review, so whatever stack of documents they had to review, they only had 24 hours to look at them. So, listen in. And uh, we'll see. Uh, but I request a couple, uh, each legislator to be given 10 minutes. When that time's up, they can be put to the end of the list. And uh, if they still have the questions that everyone else has asked them, their questions, then they can give another shot at it. One thing that's been slowing things down a little bit, if you're, uh, if you're testifying, and you can answer the question in 20 words rather than 12 minutes, please try to do this. The first speaker will be uh, Dr. Shaw, Commissioner of the New York uh, Health, State Health Department. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning Senator DeFrancisco, Assemblyman Farrell, other distinguished members of the Senate Finance and the Assembly Ways and Means Committee, Senator Hannon and Assemblyman Godfrey. I'm Dr. Nirav Shah, Commissioner of Health, and I'm pleased to have this opportunity to appear before you today to discuss the executive budget as it relates to the mission of the Department of Health. Uh, Assembly Member Sweeney and I sent you, and Levine sent you a letter two or three weeks ago about fracking, asking for a variety of information. Uh, we have not received a letter to you and to Commissioner Martens. We have not received a response to that letter, nor the information we asked for. Um, how's that going? We have uh, actually I, I, a response in progress where we've discussed that uh, the vast majority of the material for our review, the health review, is available on the internet uh, at the DEC website, and that we anticipate concluding our review in the next few weeks. And Assemblyman Crouch. As well as Senator Rivera. And thanks, Sabina. Uh, and in, in response to what the chairman just mentioned, uh, we, if you have more questions, we can get done with everyone's questions. We have that other opportunity. I'm not trying to cut any of the uh, regarding fracking, uh, would it be your opinion that upon the completion of the health study and the publication of the health study, uh, that there would be uh, a good reason for public comment? And would you recommend to the commissioner that he extend the public comment time upon uh, the completion of the health study so that the public can be heard on, on the uh, on the content, the quality, the various other information that might be included in the health study? So first, thank you for that question. It's actually not a health study. It's very specifically not a study. It's a review of the uh, existing SGEIS document and comments that have been received to date. And, and my charge was very specific. It was about making sure that uh, anything related to public health had the adequate mitigation uh, in place and if there was adequate surveillance ongoing if a program were to continue uh, to protect the public's health. That's the very narrow charge, and we've engaged three outside experts who are widely recognized as the international experts in this to help us in this review of the existing documents. Our goal is to complete that evidence review within the next few weeks, and certainly all of that will be made public, uh, as will all of the uh, suggestions of the experts. So uh, our, our goal is to remain independent, leave the experts alone, Outside, without outside influence so that they can do the deliberation and make the recommendations and then certainly open it up. 
would ask that you would recommend an extension of the public I don't know about that. I would leave that to Commissioner Martens. I'll give him back what he needs. No, I'm just giving him what he needs. I'm not recommending to open up comments or not. I'm just giving him what he's asking for. Thank you. And finally, as you can see behind me, there are a lot of people here interested in hybrid writing. And I know you've answered a couple of questions, but, um, and I'll be brief. I understand that you guys did prepare some sort of analysis, um, some sort of study that, that you have. But what I'm curious is, what, what, what documents did you use to analyze it? What, 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 health, what health impact have you studied? And how were you able to study them? Where did you get the data to study them? So for example, one of our experts is an author of one of the health impact assessments done in Colorado. Uh, the two other ex experts from UCLA and the dean uh, at the GW uh, served on the national IOM Institute of Medicine panels uh, looking at this. So we, and they also serve on many of the ongoing studies that are going around hydrofracking around the country in places where it's already going on. So we've engaged the best experts in the country, certainly, uh, if not the world, to help us in this review. We're not doing a study. We are doing a review of all of the documents that the SGEIS proposal, all of the comments that were made, uh, and, and trying to understand what has been done, what needs to be done, how can we protect the public's health. In a few weeks, we will be ready to share all of the work products of the experts uh, and the department, in that, and, and it will be a public airing. It will be a public document available along with all the EIS documents. Can you give us a sneak preview? You know, like, how well, the point is to be independent. You know, I, I think that that's the you, you want it independent of uh, of all debates and to just base it on the science, and that's why we've been very careful to remain independent. So, so, and finally, so you expect to be ready in a few weeks and then there will be a period of public input and public comment. Will you then share with everyone um, all the documents, all the analysis, all the data that went into your... I will share all the documents and the data that I have. I don't want to say study or review. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Review. Report, I guess. Yeah. So, so we can trust that you will actually share that this public conversation will begin in July. I will respond and give all that I have to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Did you do any independent analysis or inspection of what you were told? Because we're going to be talking about hydrofacking, and you're going to be told certain information by people. So we want to know what is your responsibility mm -hmm. going forward, so that we don't just act on information that we're given, which Absolutely. two years later creates a very difficult situation. So what we were told at the time is what you were told at the time by SUNY. We were told the same things that you were in terms of the financial viability of the institutions together. We were told about the, the, the complementary services that could be uh, you know, unified so that it creates savings. We were told that it will strengthen the mission of the medical school. We were told all the things that, and we hoped, as did you, that this would all come out to be true and it would serve the community better. Now, what we find today is that a lot of what we were told didn't exactly match up with the facts. And so, to the extent that whatever we were able to do with independent advisors, we didn't do a forensic audit of the institutions, you know, that's, that's not my job to do. On the other hand, uh, you know, I, would I, in retrospect, hindsight is 2020. wish that we had done something differently? And two years ago, not invested the amount of money we did? In, or, or invested it smarter? Absolutely. But where does that leave us today? That leaves us today with two institutions that are vital to the community in important ways. And we need to figure out how we can keep this community whole while seeing what is the roadmap for these institutions so that they become actually financially viable. I don't know what the answers to that are, but I do know that today, the leadership at SUNY and others are actually asking many of the right questions that we are also asking, and they've engaged the right experts to actually do those financial audits and others to figure out where is the money going, how can we make this viable. So what would you do? going forward and with the hindsight that we have, what will you do 
has been a report from the experts about the status of hydraulic fracturing so that we don't wind up in a similar situation regarding hydrofracking as we are with our husbands. So we are working very closely with SUNY. In fact, they hired uh, one of the best people we have in our department to run that healthcare book of business. And so we're very to run the healthcare uh, area arena for the SUNY system. They they hired our uh, deputy director of our office of health system management, who understands that this probably better than almost everyone in the state how to do it right. What is available from DASNY? What is available financing wise? They've hired her away, and we're very close. I spoke with her this morning, uh, and we are trying to work together to figure out what is an actual viable solution uh, going forward. So will you do that in advance of coming up with a decision regarding hydrofracking? Will you hire someone or bring in people who allow the public to have input um, so that we don't get into a situation that's really very detrimental? For SUNY, that, that no, for, for no, hydrofracking? No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, for, for hydrofracking, again, I've been given a very specific charge by the governor and by the commissioner, uh, Joe Martens, on what they need. And I am being very responsive, and I think that you will find that at the end of the day, this evidence based, science informed review will be made public, will be made. Uh, public as part of all of the other documents within a few weeks, and, and then, you know, of course people can comment on whatever they want to comment on. Quite a few people have asked you about the um, hydraulic fracturing and the report you answered that answered her comments. Um, but yesterday, the Department of Health put out a statement that the involved in this process will be existing and proposed environmental and public Surveillance systems to determine if they are adequate to establish baseline health indicators and detect and measure potential public health effects. What are public health um, surveillance systems? What do we have now? And what are you planning? And what exact costs are you going to So, for example, uh, an existing public health surveillance system is something that we have in the emergency rooms across the state to look at flu. Uh, you know, if, if there's an uptick in the flu, we get a signal from the ERs across the state, and that's actually available on our website. So those are uh, areas of importance where we look at real-time data from multiple different settings across the state to see if there's changes. That's, that's a broadly defined a surveillance system. When you look at hydrofracking, there are many potential uh, health-related impacts. Will the current proposed and, uh, well, the current proposed work adequately cover all of those health impacts. That's what a, a surveillance system designed to look at the types of health impacts is what we suggest is part of the, the, the review. Does the report, does the SGEIS currently adequately address it? If not, in what areas do we need to add to the surveillance work? Those are the kinds of questions that we're trying to answer. So you have established a new set of protocols The experts will make their recommendations in that regard, and that would establish what surveillance, if any, is needed. So even though you're not commenting on the review that's coming out, you are saying that within the review, there will be specific recommendations for public surveillance? There's two charges to the review. One is looking at any mitigation of, uh, of public health effects, and the second is around surveillance. So both will be addressed in the review. I've been reading a series of research reports um, and articles coming out, including as um, the Ithamarian Cornell and Dr. Ithamarian documenting health problems um, the agricultural sector in areas where hydrofracking has been taking place. And I have great concern about um, contaminated food going into our food system. Is that part of the surveillance that the state attempts to get involved in? I, you know, no, as far as I understand, no decisions have been made. My review is related to just the public health aspects. That does not include food.
for the state is ensuring um, that our food supply is not contaminated and risking people's health. Because the studies have yet shown um, serious cancers and other illnesses in livestock that have um, been exposed to contaminated water through drinking it and having it on the property. So my opinion for that is public health concern. I would argue that our experts have all of that uh, taken care of and are actually, that's why this is taking as long as it needs to take because the experts will inform us where we're missing anything, if anything, in the literature. I, I'm not, I was not uh, a hydrofracking expert when this started and I don't claim to be today, but I have learned a lot and I understand that there's a lot of evidence, but there's also places where we don't have as much evidence as we need. And so our, our goal is to engage the experts to help guide us on what is the state of the science, where are their holes, if any, and, and, and what, what are the next steps? Absolutely, it's a public health issue, and I, and I work with the USDA and the FDA to make sure that we adhere to the best evidence and science in, uh, in regulation. We, we are very concerned about making sure the public is safe. Uh, there's no question in my mind that that's part of the public health. Um, you referenced uh, more than once in your testimony uh, the destruction around sanity, and I represent Clark Bloom and so and I think because we still have little understanding, it's not as obvious how destructive it was. Uh, but there have been a number of state, upstate uh, floods that have been devastating. Uh, New York City does not, uh, has, does not allow or will not allow uh, the areas around the reservoirs and the buffer lands to be used for hydrofracking, and the DEC has concurred. Uh, and I'm wondering how uh, the, you envision the ability of the state to monitor floodwaters uh, that might migrate from, uh, say, Pasco uh, down into the reservoirs that affect New York City's water? That's a good question. Uh, I haven't given much thought to that, to be honest, but I mean, you know, as part of the plans, as part of the preparedness plans, as part of our review of the new updated maps, that have just been released of, of what is flood zones. Uh, th that is a book of business that our uh, preparedness folks engage in, and we will come up with updated recommendations. This also impacts our uh, discussions with the federal government on what is the water supply, how do we best protect the water supply of New York City. So th these are parts of the purview of the Department of Health. Well, I, I would just uh, suggest to you that uh, after the um, storms, uh, both Lee and Irene, uh, the Hudson, which uh, passes by my district uh, in Lower Manhattan, was essentially chalk of ground. Uh, evidence that uh, a lot of the Catskills had washed down to, uh, to Lower Manhattan, and between uh, the Catskills and Lower Manhattan on the New York City Reservoir. So I'm, I'm somewhat concerned. Uh, not that I think that the water for New York City should be uh, a higher and better safer quality than the water that people uh, upstate uh, should have. Um, obviously, uh, my friends and neighbors uh, are concerned there too. But there is this other issue that uh, DC has said we're not going to allow the New York City watershed to be uh, damaged. And yet, I'm not quite certain how we're going to surveil that. Yeah, we'll work with DEC to make sure that uh, the highest standards are maintained. Uh, the information has changed based on the last year's experience, and, and that is being integrated into our thinking. So that was his testimony as a head of Department of Health. And in closing, I'll leave you with a soundbite from the January 10th 
testimony to the New York State Assembly from various environmental groups. And as always, the most important thing is, what's your opinion? Take care. For 80,000, 50,000, 30,000 comments. Have you ever seen this before? Thousands of people protesting, thousands of people at community hearings, thousands of people coming out to learn more. And yet, we're still plugging along with the process. My question to you today, members of the assembly, is what does it take to stop a bad idea? <laughs>